There will be a lot of you people watching this that will have no clue what Ron is talking about here. This has nothing to do with the model ship other than I'm at the model table. Yeah, so you're welcome to watch, you're welcome to comment. But I'll tell you right now, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about won't make any sense to you. So, Alan, what do I remember of the Collies? Well, Donna was mentioning that she had moved into your house. I go back just a little bit before that. And my recollection of the first re remembrance of the Collies was when we moved to Buffalo Narrows. And uh, to help you remember who I was, we moved there in this airplane. And I remember, uh, as best I remember, all the Collie family walked down to the dock. Uh, Dad taxied into the old government dock uh, before he moved the plane to where they kept it, which was closer to our where we lived. And uh, anyway, uh, you guys all came down to meet us. And I remember walking back. We Not too many people had cars in, in Buffalo Narrows at that time. Uh, at least uh, we didn't, and I don't think you did either. So we were walking back to your house. Uh, and uh, uh, things that I remember of that was I had a hard time calling your mom Mrs. Collie because she reminded me of somebody else, and I kept calling her the other lady. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and I remember uh, I remember Betty had a pair of black and white saddle shoes, and it was the first time I'd ever seen that type of shoe. You remember they were very popular back in the fifties, and uh, yeah, I thought those were really cool. Uh, what else do I remember? Uh, when when I used to go to I used to like to go over to your house. If you remember, our house was just maybe. Uh, uh, oh, uh, probably a hundred yards east of your house, maybe not even. Just the other side of the sandbox. I remember the sandbox. Anyway, I used to like to go over to your house because your house was always busy, and it, and it was always it was always warm. I remember our house as being cold and quiet. Well, I was an only I was an only child at that time, and. Uh, uh, I had been raised by my grandparents and spent the last uh, last three years just before we moved to Buffalo Narrows living with my on my grandparents' farm, so I didn't have any association with other kids practically at all. Not a good experience now that I look back, but you know, uh, they did a lot of crazy things for the sake of the work back in those days. You know, I think you understand. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I used to like to go to your place. Oh, and I remember I didn't know that you were supposed to knock, and I used to just walk in. And I can remember, uh, I don't know who it was, maybe one of you older kids, might have even been you, taught me that you knock and wait for somebody to come to the door. <laughs> yeah. And that sandbox, your dad, I think it was your dad, had made little houses, you know, with little peaked roofs, and we could, you know, play, make roads and place them around on the roads. You might remember that. I don't think you played in the sandbox too much. You were quite a bit older, but uh, uh, Bobby, Kenny, uh, Betty, we were all more or less still kids at that time. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, you mentioned that there were, you're one of the 11 children. And... Uh, uh, so as soon as I read that, I thought, yeah, I can, I remember the Collie family, and I, and I started naming off the kids in my mind, you know, and I started off like, a, I went like Bill, Lauren, Alan, uh, Kenny, Bobby, Lyle, okay, so that's, that's the boys, uh, and then there was the girls, there was Geraldine, Wilna, uh, Betty, Audrey, well, that's, that was four, uh, that's only ten kids. So I must have missed one. It's possible that somebody else came along after we moved to Omaha. Uh, yeah, and uh, you probably remember when we lived beside you there in Meadow Lake, uh, once again, just east of your house. And uh, I remember when you got a job at the post office. To me, that was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, the, we had we had a lot of really really good memories. A lot of uh, I, the, what I think of the Collie family is a, a a big family that that everybody liked, and uh, yeah, you were good friends with the with the McCammons, as best I remember. Uh, yeah, what else can I remember here about the Collies? Uh, oh, I remember when you're, like Donna was mentioning living in your house, I remember when your house was moved into Meadow Lake. And it was moved in from somewhere out of town, just north of town. And when I heard it was coming, it was being towed in by a Caterpillar tractor. And when I heard it was coming, I jumped on my bike and I went out to see this wonderful event. And you were just the other side of uh, the auto court, or at least the house was. And they'd hit a soft spot on the road. You remember, the, the roads weren't paved at that time. And they hit this soft spot, and uh, they, the, the one cat couldn't pull it anymore, so they were hooking in the process of hooking a second cat on. And I can still remember seeing both of those cats sort of spinning, you might say, trying to get this big house moving again. Well, obviously they did because it's it ended up in place. Yeah, so I, I can remember your house in Meadow Lake being moved, actually going out to see it. Yeah, a lot of nice, really nice, warm memories of the Collies. And in fact, most of those people I have good memories of. Uh, you know, it, it's really too bad that we couldn't have just been normal neighbors, just our parents had just normal jobs, and uh, uh, you, you know. And uh, but no, we got uh, brainwashed into this superstition, and I think that adversely affected uh, some of us kids. Some of us kids uh, didn't handle it well, and I was one of them. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, that was too bad. It would have been so nice if we just could have been nice, normal people. Anyway. Uh, if I think of anything else, I'll add to it. While I was editing out that last clip there, I did think of some more stuff. And do you remember, Alan, when one time you folks came into Meadow Lake, it may have been when you were actually moving there from uh, Buffalo Narrows, or it may be you came in for a conference. Anyway, uh, y part of your family bunked in the uh, upstairs of the old print shop. Now, the print shop later was turned into Unger's house. But in the early years, the print shop was in the first floor, and the second floor had rooms up there, and people could use them to, you know, they came into town. And I remember, I think it was either your mom, or maybe it was Geraldine, or maybe it was even your dad, I don't know. Somebody had a harpsichord. And I was just enthralled with this thing. I'd never seen one before. And I, you know, push the button and strum it and then push a different button and strum it. And I remember doing that a lot. And thinking back now, I probably drove you you folks crazy strumming this harpsichord. Oh, uh, I, about f oh, five years ago, I took the 16 millimeter movie film that my dad had, uh, uh, had uh, made. Uh, uh, you may or may not remember, he went around and when he was flying around from place to place, he took a little bit of uh, movie film. Now, you have to uh, understand this is old, faded, deteriorated, uh, not too sharp to start with film. But at the very beginning, it, it uh, shows who I am pretty sure is your mom and Geraldine carrying a box of something to somebody's house. And then there's some, uh, later on, I remember that there's uh, shots of your dad in it. If you're interested, I can put it on this website. Because, I, like I said, I digitized it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just, just let me know in, in, the, in the comments, you know, if, you're, if you want to see that, I'll, I'll do that. I'd be happy to do that. There might, there might be other people in this uh, Facebook group that would, are interested in uh, seeing that. There might be people there that you'd recognize. Uh, or maybe not, because it's a long time ago. I mean, this goes back to around from 52 through uh, 54 or 5, something like that. Yeah. Now, oh, by the way, what did I look like in uh, when I was in Buffalo Narrows when I moved there? 
Well, here's a couple of shots. Yeah, uh, you, you may or may not remember what I looked like. I was just a skinny little kid then. Yeah, it's hard to believe I was once that skinny, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, another memory of Buffalo Narrows that I've got is uh, when I, ha I got pneumonia that winter. I don't know why I did, but I did. I got pneumonia, and I ended up in the little hospital there, and I can remember the collie kids coming to visit me. Maybe you were one of them, but I, I do remember that. Yeah, and I, I remember... Uh, uh, well, another thing I remember about all you kids is when we, when my dad was going to move the airplane, when we, the first day we got there and he was going to move the airplane from one dock to the other dock, and he was just taxiing it over, uh, a whole bunch of you guys piled into it with me. And uh, when dad would start the engine of that thing, I used to plug my ears because I didn't like the noise. Now, it was basically a fabric airplane, so uh, there was absolutely no sound insulation whatsoever. And that big 450 horsepower engine, it uh, it really made a lot of noise on the inside. You may as well have been on the outside. And, and I didn't like the noise, so I plugged my ears. And what I remember the most is, you kids laughed and thought that was so funny that I plugged my ears from the no for the noise. And yeah, I remember that well, actually. Uh, yeah, and uh, speaking of motors, I remember when Kenny took apart a washing machine motor. And I do believe it was at Buffalo Narrows that he did it. And I remember him showing it to me, and it, he was telling me it had two cylinders. Well, at that time, uh, my mom's washing machine just had one cylinder. You remember, we didn't have electricity. The washing machines had gas motors. And... Uh, yeah, and so I, I remember that, and, and years later, I thought about it, and I thought, well, washing machines didn't, didn't have two cylinders. I must have remembered that wrong. And just recently, I, I, I found out that Maytag made a gas-powered washing machine that had two cylinders. And so that's what Kenny took apart. Yeah, just different things I remember about you folks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is uh, undoubtedly uh, Bessie Garrett is going to be monitoring this because she's one of the monitors of this of this Facebook group, and uh, I I remember Bessie Garrett, Elsie Terry, and one or two other girls running through the yard in Meadow Lake, and they're holding up in the air a streamer, one end of the streamer and the other end's you know flapping out behind them as they run through the yard, and they're laughing and having a great time on this nice warm summer day and. And I was mortified because the streamer was to toilet paper. Now, you, you remember back in those days, you, you didn't use the word toilet paper in public. And we, we were so pathetically, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but uh, uh, <laughs> you didn't use words like toilet paper in public. <laughs> and here they were running through the yard with the, using this as a streamer. And, and I was thinking, silly girls. Bessie, if you're watching, you might even remember that incident. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's other little things. Uh, uh, let, let me know about the, uh, the film that Dad took. And if, if you, if you want to see it, I'll post it on this uh, Facebook group site. And you'll get to see it. I think, I think that's about it. Uh, I've uh, rambled on long enough here. So, thanks for watching. Now, Alan, you have to understand that the Collie family back in the late 40s and early 50s basically was the NCEM. And I think the NCEM was a little bit the Collie family. And other members of the NCEM, uh, we kind of looked up to you folks. Uh, yeah, we, look, uh, we, we remember you guys with fond memories. Now, I could go on and on here reminiscing about stuff that has uh, come to mind here. But you know what? I've got a model ship that I want to work on today. Maybe a little bit more later sometime.